Are you struggling to get the correct exposure for your photography? This video will cover six ways to check your exposure and I will discuss some of the pros and cons of each of these items. Hi guys, Matt here from MrLiker.com. So one of the questions I get asked the most is how do I get the correct exposure or how do I expose for my portraits? This video will look at some of the ways you can do it and stay with me until the end to see who is the winner of the February monthly giveaway. So option number one in no particular order, you can use your iPhone. There are many smartphone free apps that you can use for your light meter. Maybe call me old fashioned. I don't really trust the, the iPhone app light meters, so I don't tend to use those. Option number two is you can get yourself a small Siconic light meter, a handheld light meter, such as the L308S. This is brilliant for portraits and you can also use it for flash because you just attach your, your sync cable or put it into flash mode and you can meter both flash and continuous lighting. The benefit of the L308S over the larger L758D or whichever the latest model is, this is obviously a lot smaller. In terms of functionality, this is a spot meter and this is way more advanced and has a lot more features. The main difference if you're looking at the front of the two, this one has got your, your light dome here, if I'm calling it the correct terminology. And so that means you can meter the lights kind of next to you or whatever you can reach at arm's length. The problem with this type of meter is if you're trying to meter, say, for landscape photography or large format photography, and you're trying to be really precise and you're trying to check the exposure of the light on the other side of a, a valley if you're doing landscapes, because you can't physically, where well you can, but it'll take you a long time, <laughs> run down the valley up the other side, get to the top of the mountain, click, check the lighting with this meter. It makes much more sense to use a spot meter. The way this works is you look through here and point this at wherever you want to meter. For example, at a distant mountain, and that will then give you the exposure of a distant area compared to checking the exposure when it's next to you. So for me personally, I use this because it's small. Unless I'm doing types of photography where I can't physically get there to meter, and then I use this. Uh, this is all based on if you're using, say, film cameras without light meters. And I'll cover that in a second. Next, you can use analog light meters, which have like a selenium cell on the front. And these do the same job as, say, this one. And you just point this, you can see it working. You point this, if I make it go dark, you can see the meter goes down. So the way this works is you need to line up these two arrows and then you can read off your options for your, your metering. So for example, if you're using 500th of a second, you'll need to shoot at f1.4. If you're at the 60th of a second, you need to shoot at f4 and so on. And from my quick testing, this gives very accurate readings, very similar to these two meters. So don't underestimate the power of the, of the old meters, which you can probably find on eBay for, I don't know, 10, 20 pounds. Uh, the next one is something like this. This is a hot shoe meter by TT Artisan. And the way you use this is you depress the little button and then move the, the disc on the top to set your ISO. You then look at the lens. If a lens was attached, say we had an F2 50 mm lens, you dial in F2. You would then press the little button on the back and that's saying, plus and then all we do is turn this until it goes green so there we go so it's saying at iso 100 i need to shoot f2 one thousandth of a second the guys at per gear kindly sent me this to test and to to try out and the brilliant thing is it works really well on small like a three cameras like this i'll try and show it you from side on it's flush at the back and it's got a little bit of overhang on the front but then if i pop that off and put it onto a an m camera i know a lot of people shoot m's Again, it looks pretty nice. You can get them in silver or black. And uh, the reason I was interested in these is because the problem that I have with these meters is if I want to travel super light and I'll say I was running with the camera and I wanted to do some, I don't know, run up a mountain or cycle up a mountain and carry the absolute minimal kit. If you're traveling with a small camera, say the digital, like a CL, or say if you're shooting film, a uh, like a 2F or like a 3 camera, you don't then want to carry your camera with a really small lens on and then a light meter, which is the same size as your camera. It, it, it makes no sense. So by having a small meter such as this, you can see the, if I just make a bit of space, you can see how small it is and how light it is. It just takes one small battery on the bottom. And that is now my smallest, lightest setup for when I want to use a small camera and minimal equipment. So this is now my first choice for, say, walking around photography. However, if I want to use a meter for portraits, I would still use this one or maybe even this one after seeing it's so accurate. I'm just really comfortable using the Siconic L308 because I've used it for years. I just meet it under the model's chin as you've probably seen in other exposure type videos and that's how I expose for my all my film photos. There is one other way to do it and this causes some confusion. I get quite a lot of messages. You can also, of course, use a film camera which has a built-in light meter such as this Leica R7. 
So the Leica R7 came after the Leica 3 cameras and after the Leica M3. So this has a light meter, the same as say a Leica M6, for example. So now the confusion arises when your camera tells you one meter reading and your dedicated light meter tells you another reading. People are like, what do I use? Do I use this reading or do I use this reading? I think for me, you just need to get comfortable with your own device, shoot some test rolls. And once you know that it's giving you the right exposures, then just stick with that. Don't worry if one meter says one step higher than the other one. And then this one says one stop lower. Just use one and then stick to that. And then the job done. The problem you have is each camera and light meter device meters very slightly differently. On the R7, I don't know if you've seen this video, you've got the option of matrix metering, which is basically metering the light hitting the whole the whole uh, sensor, which has got an A in a square. We can change the settings to spot metering where the A is now in a circle or say the M is in a circle, which is what I use. Different meters are going to give you different readings depending on where you point it. You might point one slightly to the left or slightly to the right. Or well, this meter, for example, might be metering everything from here to here, whereas a spot meter is going to only look at a very small area. So I would say get used to your particular device, take some good photos with it and then stick to the device that you're, that you're happy with. If you want me to do a detailed review showing me with models and how I do exposure and things like that, maybe let me know in the comments. I didn't think there'd be enough interest, but if there is, I can definitely do something in the future. So to summarize, which is my favorite and which ones would I recommend? If you want maximum features, I'd definitely get the L758 meters. These are spot meters. When these are too big, my second choice is the Siconic L308. And I use this mostly for models. And then for walking around when I want minimal kit and not model photography, and I just want to get a general exposure for a scene, I would definitely now use something like the TT Artisan light meter, which I can put a link for below. I think they're around about 65 pounds or 65 dollars so they're much cheaper than the Siconic meters but obviously not as cheap as a, a free app for your iphone um, i have seen other youtubers using apps for their landscape photography so this is definitely an option but personally i prefer the, these sorts of meters and just to point out the obvious you can of course use the sunny 16 rule if you don't have a light meter or if you're a hybrid shooter like myself we're shooting digital alongside film it's very easy where you just look at your settings on your digital camera and copy it onto your film camera. Maybe we should do some sort of survey. Let me know in the comments which type of meter do you use. Do you use in-camera metering, analog handheld meters, spot meters, or do you use hot shoe meters such as this one by TT Artisan? They're also made by, I think, KEKS cameras and also Voigtlander, just to give some names. They all do much for much. They're all kind of copies of the same idea. If you enjoyed this video, please smash the like button and have more lens reviews coming soon. Lastly, as always, a massive thanks to my patrons and click here to see more videos. And lastly, a massive congratulations to Oliver, San Juan and Philip Choi for winning January and February monthly giveaways. See below for full details. And if you've not yet subscribed, make sure you subscribe for a chance to win in future months. Thanks for watching. Bye.